hi for those who are watching. We are celebrating the end of this year and uh, the end of Christmas with the uh, Kingdom Chapter 500. Yeah, 500 Kingdom have gone a very long way and we didn't even get a special chapter. And you know what? Yes for that. Let's take this off. Seeing that it's a special chapter. Well, technically it's not that much of a special chapter, but it is 500 and that is special enough. <clears throat> enough. In this chapter, well, there's a lot of um, talk, so to speak, and I have a difficult time understanding it. Either way, they are the extreme big army of of Kishkin that are now heading out has been report have been seen by Sao, who reported to Ribuku and his most trusted generals, Kaine, Fuki, and those other one. Of course, most of them. Kaine is freaked out angry, meaning, um, you know, that arrogance angry when someone is invading their home country. Fu, well, he's also angry, but, you know, unlike all the other one, he is a little bit more, uh, what's that word, uh, not so formal. Well, the very, the seemingly very female-looking female, female -looking general with blonde hair, I presume, is really calm. Well, the great general, the one with uh, the extreme scar on his face is pretty excited so anyway enough about that uh, Ribuku says this is what he uh, he considers this a wise move with Shubekun because he realizes that this is the first gamble of Sir Strike and as I said before in many time this battle uh, is uh, whoever wins will forever not be the same it's a crippling blow to Chin China if they fail but it's also a crippling blow to uh, uh, Sao if they fail. So Ribuku says to Kaine to report uh, to get the guardian deity of the royal capital, which is known as Kochu, to the place. We're gonna get him, meet a new dangerous person. While they're also going to fetch Kisu, who they sent to Castle Ke Kai. Hmm. We're gonna see him again. Oh, this things are getting interesting. Don't get me wrong, I don't like this bear, so I shouldn't consider this interesting, but this is not Shonen Jump. So, uh, and he tests to Fute to uh, transfer 10,000 troops. While uh, the blonde-haired general, the one who they call Shun Suju, uh, gets reported to by uh, Ribuku to pay close attention to the generals. Elsewhere, Karyo Ten is talking to Yutawa where she mentions how much Karyo Ten has grown up and also how the fact she ignored the fact that Heike was with them. But she's also being something of a, of a mentor figure to Karyo Ten here because when Karyo Ten wonders why uh, Kanki army is being so slow, Yontawa is the one who says they are uh, not entirely slow at all. And he says that uh, Karyo Ten and Shubun Kun have been on the edge a very, um, for a very long time since this campaign started. And she says to Karyo Tem that um, uh, if you act unnaturally or if you panic in a stressful situation like this, your motives are picked up by the enemy. After all, this is more than just an extreme insane attack against Sao. They are still hiding their true motive. They are to act as a very huge distraction where the rest can go to Gyo. The As they say, acting is we plan to hit western south of Kokyuku, which Ribuku think they are attacking. But um, does say that uh, they need to... If they... Uh, sorry about that. I lost... I lost my word there. What I meant to say is that if they get picked up that they are having a distraction here, well, then everything is screwed. So he says to Karyo Ten that uh, the true battle, first battle, and the true face of this battle is actually not on who can hurt who the most. Uh, it is actually more on how long they can keep Ribuku in the dark with all this. So how long can they keep the attack against Gyo on Kokyoku? Mm, that's a question. That's actually a very long road. So Yotawa says to Karyo Ten to not be intense, given that will open up uh, 
the what's that word what you could call it all the different uh, effect of the battle elsewhere uh, supplies transfer through Kinan uh, five days to Kukyu no non to Kukyuku which a narrator describes that uh, Yontawa was cor was correct when she said that uh, there were a lot of South soldiers who actually inf infiltrated the Shin military. Huh. I found that very strange that they can actually infiltrate the military, but then again, mm, that's pretty difficult. I mean, sorry about that. I guess it's st I'm still a little bit dizzy after all the Christmas party. What I meant to say is, Sao has worms in the supply unit and in the army that way they're gonna do all this in get pick up all the information however seeing that only a few which is mostly like some trusted generals moreover even and some trusted troops are the only ones that know the attack on Gyul then they can keep that hidden from Sao so as long as Karyu Ten don't freak out too much then this attack can actually happen and uh, with the blueprint they got from the supply, Sao think they have a pretty concrete uh, picture of the army. However, what they don't know of, not even the worms I think know of, is that uh, the supply unit that are heading towards uh, the troops is not the real supply unit. Deep underground Kinan exists an underground uh, factory that has been uh, here for the last three months that they've done over and over again and the real supply line stretch into Kukyu is actually the real stockpile of food was instead being accompanied here at Kinan not near Kukyu it was in a secret underground facility because the fake line that they, that they sent from uh, Kinan from another special Kinan, actually was not the real deal. Meaning that for the first time, they are actually keeping Ribuku in the dark of all this. Chin's mechanization had already been set in motion since long ago. And given that we see a picture of Orson, it's very likely he planned this. And is actually stretched with his MO. After all, we cannot forget that Orson is a guy who cares more about his life than anything else. Why does that have to do with anything, you ask? Well, if you think about it, you have a fortress, you hide everything, and you hide yourself, and you create a perfect wall, so to speak. Now they're keeping a secret underground facility, which probably only consists of Orson's men, or other people, that are that are creating a false supply line that not even the suppliers know about. Only those that deliver it knows. So those are trapped down there. It's basically a hidden thing in a castle. Just like Orson always has a big castle to prepare for everything else. It also s similars when he saved the Sao, no, the Qin military during the coalition army. Creating that huge distraction when they were in the mountain. A distraction indeed. And if this is indeed, well, you know, Orson's... A mo then we're gonna have some interesting battles at uh, at our throats so yeah Chin, Chin China's mechanization have already begun we got some information about that and Sao and Ribuku are already heading there so the question is now I mean I'm sorry I haven't been the best of way to describe all this I guess I must have been distracted by something it's uh, is the fact that Yotawa says, how long can they keep Ribuku in the dark about this? Because there's no way this will be in the dark forever. One of the reasons why they won against Ribuku in that uh, final coalition army was because they, not a, Ribuku didn't, didn't think that some mountain tribes would help Chin China. And this is basically the same thing. Currently, Ribuku should not know that their plan is not to conquer Kogyuku, but Gyu. So then my question is, how long will he will it take before he knows that? As I said before, there is no way there is not someone strong at Gyu. 
even if Ribuku does not think that they're gonna attack you, I think it would be stupid not to place a strong general at least at every single port. But then again, this is war, and in war, you had to calculate your chess pieces at the right place, seeing that uh, one strong guy can create everything else. But I think I still go with my theory that maybe Hawken will be at Guo. If you think about it, that would be the most amazing thing ever. Hawken at Guo, but Chin China will win. That's the day Hawken will die, and if he dies, the moral of the Sao troops in Guo will shrink. And then they will definitely win. But we mentioned, we got mentioned Kisu again. Kisu is still um, here. The, he has been in con Ribuku has been in contact with him. There is no way we are not gonna see him too. Is it possible that he, that he will be the one to be sent to Gyo? After all, he has a vendetta against the uh, against the. Uh, he Shin unit, seeing that Kai, Kai, Kyo Kai killed one of his adoptive brothers. Although it's not exactly Kyo, sure if he knew about that. And after all, he is also the one to technically blame for the attack, for the loss of that hill. So yeah, what awaits us next? No idea. But everybody needs to evolve, even Kari Ten need to evolve, because... Uh, now she needs to, well, I was going to say get a grip, but that's the wrong word. Because in this war, our seats are always in the seats. That's basically this chapter. Just me babbling a little about, but uh, 500 and the last chapter of Kingdom. Kingdom has really been on a roll this year. But I think I'll take talk about that in another video, side video, so I'm speak. So give me your thoughts if you have any.